Interesting thing about Smyr or Sardis is this, they were built around Sibyl worship, just, just like Smyrna. Their goddess of choice was Sibyl. Remember we talked about the frenzied sex orgies in the temple of Sibyl, how she was so disgusting the Roman Empire didn't even want to include Sibyl into their cast of gods and didn't for a long time. Such a disgusting thing and um, had to do with castration. They're very bloody. They were cutters, cut themselves. Not only that, they were, <clears throat> Sybil was known as a, an oracle. So they were very prophetic. And you would come to the temple of Sybil like you would come to the oracle at Delphi, which is the most famous oracle in the Greek world. You would come there because this prophetess could give you a word. And I tell you, people like at Delphi, everybody came. The who's who came because they wanted a word. Reminds me of the church today. If we have a prophet, everybody will be here. If we have a teacher or a pastor, you know, good luck. Hello. I'm not talking about you guys. I'm talking about just in general. <clears throat> everybody wants a, an oracle, you know. And this is again why you have to be very careful with spiritual things. Desire spiritual gifts, Paul says. Just be careful about the spiritual gifts. It's like the third time I'm reiterating that today. I think maybe the Lord wants us to know that. But Sybil, this is a place where you can come and get a prophetic word. And it, it was similar. It was the frenzied, this is the picture, the frenzied state. The, the, the disheveled hair, you know. I don't want to do it because it takes me a long time to get my hair just looking this bad. So if I shake my head, it could get a lot worse. But just the hair hanging down in your face, you know. Kind of like 80s night at my house a couple of weeks ago. I mean, and, and quivering and shaking and in an altered state of consciousness. And then this woman is going to give you prophetic word. Now the whole history behind that, and this is all in the teaching of Sardis, the whole history behind that was that in Delphi, okay, there had been, ancient, in ancient times there had been known to be a female serpent there called Python. How many people give me just five more minutes? Python, man. And I think it was Apollos had killed, in mythology, had killed Python. But the spirit of Python remained in Delphi. And whoever the oracle or the prophet or the prophetess, it was usually a woman because the snake was a female serpent. So whoever the prophetess was would operate by the spirit of Python. And it became known as, these became known as Pythian gods and goddesses. Pythian temple, Pythian rites. You were coming under the influence of Python. <laughs> I've been in some wild charismatic churches, you know, that seemed like they were under the influence of Python. <laughs> so I, I, I'm, not, I'm not totally misunderstanding of the people that are a little bit cautious or overcautious. I get it. We've had some snake oil charmers and people like that, you know, in the past in the ministry. But this is the deal. So in Sardis, when you went to the temple, this is what you could expect, man. You, you could expect, among other things, like the false prophetic. It pervaded the town. See, in ancient times, it wasn't like it is today. Everybody knew about supernatural mysticism. Everybody knew about things like prophecy. Everybody, you probably, back in those days, probably most people knew about, like, unknown languages. Altered states of consciousness. <laughs> they, they, you know... It's very similar because the devil stole his stuff from God. What's, what's real different about that, right? And somebody like Elijah. Somebody like Elijah's on the mount, you know, and the king demands a word from him. Wants to know where, so he sends people uh, to get him. And Elijah's like, hey, you think I'm a real man of God? If I am a real man of God, read this in your Bible. He says, why don't we let fire come down from heaven and consume all of you? And bam, it happened. That's pretty weird. <laughs> you guys are so quiet. It's in your Bible. And a second band comes. And they're like, hey, hey, King so-and-so demands Elijah. I think it was Ahab. He demands that you come and give him a word. And I said, oh yeah? Demanding of God? God doesn't operate like that. That's the pagan world that you're used to. God doesn't operate like that. You wait to hear the invitation from God. You see, even in the New Testament, these things operate as the Spirit wills, not as we will. We don't just go to prophecy conferences and learn how to prophesy. Man, we get close to Jesus. I don't need a prophet to teach me how to prophesy unless they're close to Jesus. 
So you could come all day long in Sardis, man. You could talk about supernatural things. In fact, like I said before, when Paul went to the city of Philippi, okay, that's what happened. He went down to prayer, and there were people already praying down by the riverbank in the morning. They were Pythian servants of Sybil. And one of those people stood up and said, hey, these men are from God. Started prophesying, and it was true. These men are from God. Paul and Silas are from God. Trick of the devil, try to attach himself to what God's doing, make himself look better. They knew they couldn't overpower Paul, couldn't stop Paul. The spirit of Python couldn't stop Paul anymore. They could stop you unless you enter into agreement with it. If Paul had said, hey, you're a, a fine candidate for my prophetic team, join me would have been a different story. But Paul tested the spirit and thought about it. Day after day, it wasn't just a one day thing. Thought about what's going on here, what's going on here. And finally the spirit led him and he cast the devil out of the person and said she had a spirit of divination. That's what it meant, she had a spirit of python. See, these are dark cities. And so if the devil can't get you one way, if he can't lure you in through the Midas touch, become a Christian and you'll get all the gold you want, he'll lure you in through. Become a Christian and you'll get all the words you want. And you know, when words are not from God, you know what happens? We end up with a bunch of words filed away somewhere that draw our attention to probably all the things that we're not called to do. We go back, I remember the word that I had from Saul. You know what I do with words? I take words and I'm like, okay, I think about them, I analyze them, if I believe it's God, and then after a while, I don't see anything with that, I just put that on the shelf. And I'm like, God, I'm leaving that with you. It's not that I'm forgetting about it. It's not that I'm treating it with contempt. Lord, I know you could speak to me like this. You've done it many times. But as for, as for this thing that I don't understand, just put on the shelf, Lord. You bring it back to me if, if I need to know. If not, I don't care if I ever come back to it. Because I don't need a prophecy. I serve the greatest prophet in the history of the world. Man, every time he speaks to me, it's a prophecy. Are you here? Okay. Okay. And in verse 5, and we'll close. He that overcomes, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. It's the picture of a bride. It's the picture of the kingly ceremony that's about to be revealed in the rest of the book of Revelation. You see white raiment throughout. And different scriptures as we go onward, the ritual that's happening in the heavenly temple. And the vision that John's having. Everybody gathered around the throne of God, especially the martyrs, are dressed in white. Jesus, in the beginning of the book of Revelation, he's dressed. His hair is white. It doesn't literally say that his clothing is white. But we know that the, many times angelic beings, that they have clothes of white. It doesn't just mean white. It means clothes of light. I want you to get that. It means that you're dressed in glory. You're dressed in the, 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 the aura, so to speak, if I could use that word, of God himself. You're, you're surrounded with the presence of God and you're enveloped in God. Whoever overcomes, and that's what these seven messages are about. They bring every message. Jesus brings every message to this point of, if you overcome, I have some things for you. He said, I have white raiment for you. And he said, I will not blot your name out of the book of life. There's a way that you can know that you know that you know that you're saved. And again, I've said it a hundred times today. Just simply keep current with the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're if you're, if you're right with God today, you'll be right with God then. Amen? And he will not blot out your name, inferring that he could and probably will blot people's names out of the book of life. I don't know how once saved, always saved people keep their doctrine when you got verse 5 to deal with, but a lot of people do. Get in the Bible, read it, and see what you think. But I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. So I like that. At the end of the day, really what it's saying is this, and then verse 6, he has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. At the end of the day, it's just a short little message to a, a church, but it's saying, look, represent Jesus well today. This is a message to leave you with today. Represent Jesus well today. If you've been hurt and you're still licking your wounds, are you representing Jesus well? Probably not. So this is what you do. You say, God, I choose to forgive. I don't want to forgive. It doesn't even sound right coming out of my mouth. Maybe I'm still mad about it. I'm still upset I'm hurt. But Lord, I choose. You see, choosing is the thing. Choosing, not feeling. Christianity is not about feeling. It's about choosing. Feelings follow choices. Choosing. Lord, I want to represent you well. 
Let's close our eyes, bow our heads this morning. I want to ask you this question. Are you representing the Lord the way that you think and believe that you should? The way that the Bible says that you should? Is there something inside your heart that made the Holy Spirit's been dealing with you about and says, you know, I'm not happy with that? 